In around two months or eight weeks, both me and you will be sitting down in exam hall taking a test that will either determine our final GCSE grade or our final A-level grade. When I said that, how did that make you feel? In my opinion, the feeling you should have had is not complete confidence, but rather it should have been an excited nervousness. If you've been putting in the work for the last couple of months, you should be excited to see the fruits of your labor. But at the same time, you shouldn't be too confident. There should be some nervousness because it is an exam after all. But if the feeling you felt was just pure anxiety to the point where it was sort of overwhelming, then we have some work to do. But don't worry, I'll try to give you the solutions. Now, firstly, two months is way more than enough time to get good grades. But of course, we need to be realistic. If I'm averaging threes and fours, but in the final test I want to get all nines, then it's not impossible, but it's very, very unlikely. But two months is nearly 60 days. And if you're studying two hours a day for 60 days, that's 120 hours. You can do an insane amount of studying and preparation in 120 hours. So don't worry about the lack of time. But if we want to get the most out of these two months, then we need to plan them. The one who fails to plan, plans to fail. Now you've heard that many times, so let's put it into effect. The first thing you need to do in your plan is to make sure that you actually have a studying technique that works. Before anything else, it needs to be effective because what is our goal? Our goal is to get the top grade. And to do that, we need to make sure that our studying technique is efficient. I made videos on how I study for all the subjects that I took at GCSE and A-level. So if you want some inspiration for your studying techniques, you can check those videos out. Now, you don't only plan how you're going to study, but you need to plan your life around studying. Are you going to stay up late and sleep in every day, wasting precious hours that you could use to study? Or are you going to optimize your sleep and wake up early in the morning so that you can get those effective hours of studying? Are you going to be lazy and skip exercising? Or are you going to find the time to go to the gym or exercise at home so that you're in a good positive Positive mindset and you don't get burnt out when you study are you going to sacrifice bad habits you know what they are they could include stuff like scrolling through tiktok and instagram and watching netflix now of course there's a time for relaxation but if we're being honest we already get enough dopamine from things like social media and youtube and netflix and that just makes our attention spans shorter making studying way harder one thing you also need to know is that your studying session at the first week of that two months should not look the same as the last week of that two months you should be going through a natural cycle of just going through content, consolidating that content, and then just banging out practice questions. In the first couple of weeks, there will be a lot of information that you need to relearn. So you might spend those studying sessions just going through the content, making notes and flashcards. In the last couple of weeks, that will be when you've nearly finished relearning all the content. So most of your studying sessions will just be doing practice questions and only going back to the content when you struggle with a question. Now, another big tip, pause. Now, another important tip that you need to take into account is using positive and negative reinforcements. For an extended period of time, like two months, it's usually hard to stay consistent. If I have a unit test next week and I know I'm underprepared, I'll find motivation to study two or three hours a day consistently until that test because I know it's a short span. But if you take that and extend it over two months, studying consistently becomes harder. The way every animal species basically work, including humans, is that if they experience a negative repercussion when they do something, they'll dislike that thing that they did. For example, as a child, when you put your hand next to the stove and you get burnt, you'll dislike the action. You won't do it again because you've had the experience of burning yourself. And the opposite is also true. If you experience some sort of a word when doing something, you want to do that thing again. Think of someone who went to the gym for a couple of months and then they finally start seeing progression. They start seeing their body become slimmer, for example. They'll now have more motivation to go to the gym because they've experienced that reward. We can also implement this when we study. If one day I feel like I was lacking with my studying, maybe I didn't study enough or my studying just wasn't efficient, I was getting distracted too much, I can punish myself. Maybe I'll force myself to take a cold shower or do 100 push-ups or donate some money to charity. When I do this, I train my brain to dislike the action of slacking when studying. The opposite is also true. If one day I feel like I've studied well, I can reward myself. I'll allow myself to go out with my friends or watch a football match. Anything that you enjoy, like playing football or going out or so on, use it to your advantage. Make it so that you can only do that hobby if you study well that day. So when you study, you don't only think, oh, I'm studying so that I can get good grades. You're also thinking, I'm studying so that I could go play football later on or go out with my friends later on. So you have multiple layers of motivation and hold yourself accountable because no one else will. Now, this time of year is what I call the gray area. Usually by now, students start finishing the courses that they're learning, but they're not given study leave yet. So they have a lot of time in school that's wasted. If you finished a particular course, let's say GCSE Chemistry, try to now use that lesson time to go through the content that you found hard so you could relearn it. And make sure you start with the hard stuff because your teacher is right there. If you found something hard, you could just go and ask them. But if you procrastinate the hard content until you're on study leave and then you start struggling with it, it's going to be hard to get a hold of your teacher. It's easy to just walk up to them and ask them a question. But if you're at home and you start emailing them, then they might not respond. They might just ignore you. And the same goes with essay based subjects. 
If you answer an essay-based question in lesson time, you can just give it to your teacher. They'll mark it quickly and give you some feedback. But if you do it at home, you email the teacher, the teacher will procrastinate it. Maybe they don't respond. Maybe they take a week. You're wasting all this time where you could be taking in feedback and applying it so you can get better. But if you're in school, you could always just chase them up and they'll get it done quicker.